Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So a lot of people are talking about the Tower of Joy on Game of Thrones season six. There's just, there's a location that they're supposed to be filming at in Spain, like it's in Guadalajara, that looks like it might be the Tower of Joy. So I'm just gonna break down why everyone thinks that's such a big deal. Careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on the show so far. So here we go. The Tower of Joy is the place where Rhaegar Targaryen took Lyanna Stark when he absconded with her prior to Robert's Rebellion. It, it was like the first thing in a sequence of events that led to Robert's Rebellion. There, there was a lot of other reasons for the Rebellion, but it all started with Rhaegar going rogue and, and taking Lyanna Stark. When you look at the map here, it's really like up at the northern edge of Dorne. The Red Mountains themselves are pretty famous just because the, the Dornish people were able to use them to repel Aegon the Conqueror during the War of Conquest. As you can see where it sits here, it's highly defensible. So it just it's a very advantageous position, either as a lookout tower or just as a point of defense for any defending army. Before Rhaegar Targaryen came along though, it was, it was just a normal tower. He is the one that named it the Tower of Joy. The first time that we learn about it is actually in the first book when Ned Stark is under the milk of the poppy and he starts recalling the showdown at the Tower of Joy. So when people talk about the Tower of Joy, there's two different things. There's the physical tower itself and then there's the big event, the showdown at the Tower of Joy, where Ned Stark, Hal and Reed, and a couple other people went to rescue Lyanna Stark. They ended up fighting Arthur Dayne and a couple other Kingsguard that had been left there by Rhaegar Targaryen to protect Lyanna Stark. There's a lot of conjecture about, you know, what was really going on there, so that, that's why everyone is hoping that we get to see it in Season 6. There's really two big ways that they could do that. They, they could do a literal flashback, like we did with Cersei's flashback, although you, you could argue that she was remembering that and we were seeing her memory. Or they could use a Weirwood flashback, which isn't something we haven't seen on the show yet, so I'm not, I'm not going to explain it yet, just to avoid spoilers. But if you know what I'm talking about and you want to talk about it, just please use spoiler tags in the comments. It's just that there are a couple story devices that George R. Martin uses in the books to talk about events that happened in the past. So far, we've only seen one of those on the show. So I'm just going to read this just as Ned Stark is remembering it. This is like right out of book one. They were seven facing three, and he's talking about Howland Reed and his other companions that rode in with him. They faced Sir Arthur Dane, Sword of the Morning, Sir Gerald Hightower, and Sir Oswald Went. So uh, yeah, obviously the Gerald Hightower and Oswald Went, they, they aren't complete nobodies. Ned had noticed that they were missing at the Battle of the Trident, which is Rhaegar supposedly died, and the Sack of King's Landing. So this is, ba this is basically after Robert has won the rebellion. Arthur Dane and the other Kingsguard refused to bend the knee despite the fact that they had lost the war. Arthur Dane, being one of the best swordsmen to ever live, almost ended up killing Ned Stark, but he and Howland Reed were able to defeat him together. When it was all over, they found Lyanna Stark lying in a bed with blood all around her, and as he's remembering it under the milk of the poppy, he just remembers making a promise to her as she lay dying. In the timeline after that, Ned Stark took Arthur Dane's blade, Dawn, his ancestral blade, back to his home at Starfall and gave it to his sister. They just, they have a, a tradition where they pass the blade down to the most worthy person in their house. After that, he returned to Winterfell with Jon Snow in tow, as Catelyn Stark remembers it. He came home from the war with a baby. So there's a lot of conjecture as to like where that baby came from. A lot of people think that, you know, because Ned Stark spent time at Starfall, that Ashara Dane was the mother. But the biggest part of the fandom believes that the promise that Lyanna Stark extracted from Ned Stark had to do with Jon Snow. That, that Jon Snow was the baby born at the Tower of Joy. And that's, that's what all the blood was from. And she, she just died from childbirth. So everybody like raises their hand and says, you know, hey, wait, you know, why, why can't Ned Stark tell Jon Snow who his real mother is? Why is it such a secret? Why is it so important that he protect that? The best theory as to why that needed to remain so secret is, is because it would have plunged the kingdom into another civil war and everyone wanted to prevent that. Imagine if it were true that Jon Snow were really a Targaryen, really the son of, of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. As we know right now, all of Cersei's children are imposters. They're all true Lannisters. So it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to think that some of the great houses would rally behind a new candidate with true Targaryen blood. That's why Varys and Tyrion are, are so excited about Daenerys coming to Westeros. Because they're like, we totally understand how the great houses work. We understand politics. You need to get them to rally behind you. You need their support. As of right now, people don't seem really hot on the Queen. She just did that big walk of shame and she's going to go on a huge tear now. Just see the look in her eyes as she's being carried away by the mountain. King's Landing in Season 6 is a powder keg waiting to go off. If a secret Targaryen were to emerge, someone who's been a proven leader up at the wall, then it would just fan those flames. 
So that's probably why everyone involved with what happened at the Tower of Joy want to keep it such a big secret. As far as we know, like there's only a couple of people that could confirm Jon Snow's parentage, though, that they could confirm that that's true. There's Helen Reed, who's still alive in the books and on the show. We, we haven't seen him on the show, so we just have to assume that he's still alive floating around somewhere. And then there's anyone that Rhaegar may have secretly told about what he was doing, like Maester Aemon, for instance. He's someone that he corresponded with on a regular basis. Maester Aemon, of course, is very, very dead right now, but he kept very good records at the Night's Watch. So there are just like a number of roundabout ways that we could find out what happened at the Tower of Joy. And really, the only reason to show it would be to confirm what happened between Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. That's why everyone is thinking about Jon Snow and Arthur Dayne so much, just because the show looked like it was casting someone that sounded like Arthur Dayne. I've already done a casting video and I did an Arthur Dayne video, so I'll have links for those in the description. Let me know though, you know, just based on like some of these shooting locations, do you think that the show is going to do a Tower of Joy scene, whether it be a flashback or in present day? The, the reason people think that it, it's a flashback is because Ned Stark destroyed the tower after Robert's Rebellion. So if Game of Thrones is shooting at something that looks like the Tower of Joy and they don't make it look like it's torn down, like they don't use CG to destroy it, then it has to be a flashback. And the only reason you would flashback to the Tower of Joy is if you wanted to do a Lyanna Stark death moment. The other theory about, about the Arthur Dane flashback is that it was a flashback to the Smiling Knight and it would be Jamie's flashback because Arthur Dane saved him from being killed. The person that the show is casting is just someone who's supposed to use a legendary blade and the actor that they want to find needs to be a really awesome swordsman in real life. Amongst the list of legendary blades in Game of Thrones, the most legendary is Dawn. It's older than all the Valyrian swords that we've seen on the show and it's made from a fallen meteor. So if you want to learn more about Arthur Dane and his sword, just watch my Arthur Dane video. Just to recap some of the Comic-Con business that happened last week, a, a lot of people were disappointed because they didn't show us who the new cast was. There, there were a lot of theories about why people were missing. Cer certain actors were either having babies or they were filming other stuff. So that's not the big deal. The big deal is, is they're not saying anything about season six other than Marjorie Tyrell hinting that she may not have the Queen of Thorns around to help her out in season six. That doesn't mean that she's going to die. That doesn't mean the Queen of Thorns is going to die. She could just go back to Highgarden. But that was like literally the only thing that we learned about season six. That and the fact that the actors were being held to much stronger security clauses about information leaks. So really, if, if there's anything to look forward to in season six, is it that the show will confirm some really big fan theories or destroy them completely forever? Either way, lots of answers are coming even though I think the show is going to get a season seven, so it, it might hold some of the biggest fan theories to season seven. That's actually a really good question to ask you guys. So if, if the show is going to get seven seasons, would you rather they hold like the biggest secrets to that very last season, or would you rather find out who Jon Snow's mother is in season six? No matter what happens, I feel like 50% of the fandom is going to be disappointed. So just, just to make you guys happier, I'll announce this week's giveaway winner, or the, the Comic-Con giveaway winner. Eric Van Cleve and April Chems, you guys both win $20 Amazon gift cards. Be sure to message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact info. And there's a new round of the giveaway now. All you have to do to enter is just, you know, be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. The weekly Game of Thrones giveaway is going to continue indefinitely. So I'm going I'm to try and stick to my weekly Game of Thrones bonus video schedule. And I will do a Q&A tomorrow. Like we're, we're back to the normal schedule now that Comic-Con is over. So I think what I'm going to do for my next bonus video is pick like a couple big events from Jamie Lannister's history, just, just because I think his character is going to go in a really interesting direction in season six. But if there are any other, you know, bonus videos you guys want me to do, just let me know in the comments. While you guys wait for that stuff, you can click here to learn all about Arthur Dane's history. And you can click here for all my Comic-Con videos. I've just done a whole bunch of trailer videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.